Let's start with these new accusations from uh, the sitting president of the United States about his predecessor. CNN's Athena Jones is live in West Palm Beach. So, Athena, do we have any idea where this is coming from? Hi, Fred. No, at this point, we do not. As you have been emphasizing, as we have been emphasizing, the president has offered no evidence uh, whatsoever uh, to back up these allegations, these very serious allegations that the former president uh, was essentially spying on him. Uh, I have reached out to the White House, so have several of my colleagues. We are still awaiting an explanation. Uh, but I can tell you that, that the president didn't just send out that first tweet. He said it was a series of tweets starting early this morning. Here are two of the others. He said, I bet a good lawyer could make a great case out of the fact that President Obama was tapping my phones in October just prior to election. Uh, now, again, President Trump calls this a fact. Uh, it's not an established fact. There's been no proof offered. Uh, the second, uh, the other tweet that he sent out, how low has President Obama gone to tap my phones during the very sacred election process? This is Nixon slash Watergate, bad or sick guy. Uh, so those are uh, among the series of tweets the president sent out starting early this morning, about 6.30 a.m. Uh, and again, we're still waiting for more comments or clarification from the White House. Now, I've reached out to spokespeople for uh, the former president, President Obama, and they are aware of the tweets, but they haven't yet commented on their substance. But a former uh, NSC spokesman, a former spokesman for the National Security Council under Obama, Ben Rhodes, did respond, taking to Twitter uh, to say, first, no president can order a wiretap. Those restrictions were put in place to protect citizens from people like you. Uh, he's speaking directly to President uh, Trump there. And in response to that tweet from the president about how he believes a, a good lawyer could make a good case, uh, Rhodes said that that's not the case, only a liar could do so. And then later he tweeted to the pundits, people who applauded the president's a speech on Tuesday night before a joint session of Congress and called it presidential. He said, dear pundits who lauded his speech, is it still presidential to call your dignified predecessor bad or sick guy. So uh, a lot going on on Twitter this morning, but we're still awaiting answers and proof uh, from the White House and, and to learn more about what this, these accusations are based on. Fred? All right, Athena Jones, thank you so much. It's driving conversations in a lot of places already. Those town halls continue to be underway uh, right now in Clemson, South Carolina. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham uh, just responded during a town hall there uh, in his home state of South Carolina. CNN's Polo Sandoval has been monitoring this event, and he's joining me right now. Polo, a lot has been discussed right. uh, at that town hall, but right off the top, Lindsey Graham did talk about the investigations ongoing involving Trump right. campaign and Trump officials and Russia. Exactly, Fred. Right out of the, out of the gate, Senator Graham tackling this uh, latest Trump Twitter tirade uh, during, that, uh, during that town hall discussion that was taking place there in, uh, on Clemson University uh, in, in South Carolina. I want you to hear directly from the senator from South Carolina exactly what he had to say regarding some of these latest posts by President Trump. Take a listen. So apparently this morning, President uh, Trump tweeted out that he believes that President Obama ordered wiretapping of his campaign, <laughs> Trump Tower, uh, and that would be, yes. So I don't know what happened, but I can only tell you the summary of the tweet. The President of the United States is claiming that the former President of the United States ordered wire wiretapping of his campaign last year. I don't know if it's true or not, but if it is true, illegally, <laughs> it would be the biggest political scandal since Watergate. Now, the other side, the other side of the story, just, just be quiet, be quiet for a second. If the former president of the United States was able to obtain a warrant lawfully to monitor Trump's campaign for a violating law, that would be the biggest scandal since Watergate. Yeah. So here's the deal. As we get ready to talk to each other, I'm very worried. I'm very worried that our president is suggesting that the former president has done something illegally. I would be very worried if, in fact, the Obama administration was able to obtain a warrant lawfully about Trump campaign activity with foreign governments. <clears throat> so 
It's my job as a United States Senator to get to the bottom of this. I promise you I will. You just heard there Senator Graham promising to uh, initially help launch this investigation into some of these latest allegations here. But what is interesting here, too, we are getting uh, not just talking uh, that's taking place there in that town hall, Fred, but also shouting and plenty of it. In fact, uh, after the senator from South Carolina tackled that issue, there was also some of the crowd, some of the members in the audience there that stood up and, and, and uh, were very expressed some of their disappointment with some of the uh, with some of what the senator had to say, particularly when it comes to possibly working with President Trump and tackling uh, what is its very ambitious agenda. It's interesting, though, some of the members in the audience, they have green cards, they have red heart shaped cards. They're using that to express uh, the, 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 their disappointment and also um, their displeasure with the senator from South Carolina. But as you, you just heard from him directly, mm -hmm. uh, he's saying that he, two things would concern him, two scenarios would concern him. One, that the, uh, Trump, that the Obama administration would possibly illegally obtain this uh, alleged wiretap or that they would have enough evidence to legally uh, be able to convince a judge to wiretap uh, Trump Tower. So again, there's a lot uh, of allegations that, are, that we are waking up to this morning. And of course, a senator from South Carolina promising that he would like to get to the bottom of it. And he tackled it right off the top, even yeah. though the expectation was the primary focus would sure. be on uh, repealing, replacing the Affordable right. Care Act, or perhaps even immigration matters, the even the travel well. ban um, uh, revisions. But instead, that was uh, the one that got the most attention at the very beginning. He did touch a little bit on, uh, on, this, uh, on how he would like to essentially repeal Obamacare. And there were a lot of people in the audience that just wouldn't have it. They quickly got up and started to uh, yell at the, very uh, at the senator from South Carolina. Very emotional, very passionate. We're going to keep an eye on All right, what thanks so place. much, Polo. Appreciate that. All right, uh, meantime this morning, Democratic Senator Ben Cardin, the ranking member on the Foreign Relations Committee, says the president's new uh, allegation that uh, President Obama bugged Trump Tower should amplify the need for an independent investigation. Obviously, the president's going to interpret things one way. I might interpret things a, a second way. It's important for the American people to have an independent investigation of what Russia did in attacking us in our free elections, the contacts they had with many Americans, how that came about, what was the relationship, if any, with the Trump campaign. All that really needs to be done by an independent commission. I've filed legislation to create it. I think there's now more and more momentum to get that done sooner rather than later so the American people can get an independent evaluation here. All right, joining me right now, law professor at George Washington University, Jonathan Turley, uh, CNN senior law enforcement analyst and former FBI assistant director Tom Fuentes, CNN political commentator and assistant editor at the Washington Post, David Swerdlake, and CNN political analyst and New York Times deputy culture editor, Patrick Healy. All right, good to see all of you. Glad you could all be with us. Uh, Tom, uh, you first. With no proof, uh, President Trump accusing President Obama of wiretapping him, how would investigators get to the bottom of whether this happened? Well, first of all, Frederica, uh, FISA wires, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act wiretaps, um, are authorized by a top secret court, the FISA court in Washington, D.C. And in this case, the FBI is the only agency authorized to lawfully conduct these type of national security wiretaps. So they would submit an affidavit to the court and get authority to conduct these wires. The, the wiretap itself, the results of the wiretap, would all be top secret and should not be uh, leaked out. I think what's happened here is that numerous um, media organizations have reported that this wiretap existed, that a first request in June by the FBI was denied, a second one in October was granted, and the FBI was conducting this kind of wiretap at Trump Tower. Now, that's from media reports and, and many of them. And then, of course, what happens is once one outlet reports that, others quote the first outlet, and then that gets repeated and repeated. Uh, we refer to this as circular reporting. And before you know it, because everybody is saying it, it somehow becomes mm -hmm. the truth. It becomes accepted as uh, a fact. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that yet. So we okay. don't know. All we know is that President Trump is seeing this reporting and apparently is not happy about it and chose to go on Twitter with uh, what he believes is the case. And Tom, let me uh, ask you to hold on and our entire panel hold on a moment. I want to bring into the equation uh, one of our producers from D.C., Shimon Prokopetz, who has some new information now. Apparently he just spoke with a former senior U.S. official. Shimon, what more can you tell us about this? 
Um, hi, uh, Frederick. Well, basically, we're getting a flat denial from a, uh, a pretty senior former U.S. official uh, during the Obama administration uh, who's familiar with uh, some of the investigations uh, into the into the um, hacking and other matters relating to some of the folks uh, surrounded by Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, basically, this official says this just did not happen. Uh, they never wiretapped his phone. Uh, there was never a warrant issued uh, to wiretap any of his phones. Um, and also, you know, this official kind of outlines some of what Tom uh, was was speaking about, this, uh, the FISA court. They would have had to go to a judge uh, in, in the FISA court to get approval for this. And um, I think it would have been pretty difficult for them to uh, legally get any kind of warrant to tap uh, Donald Trump's uh, phone, given that, you know, we were kind of, October was the height of the campaign, uh, and they would have had to meet all sorts of legal burdens that uh, just probably would not have happened. So pretty much uh, this official says this just did not happen, and uh, basically saying that Donald Trump is making this up. And, and so, Shimon, did, did this former uh, official with the Obama administration, senior uh, former official, uh, express to you uh, his or her reaction to a sitting president making this kind of accusation about uh, his predecessor without also revealing any evidence? Yeah, I mean, they're pretty shocked. I mean, are they surprised? Uh, probably not. Uh, they think he's just trying to change uh, what we're all talking about. Um, there is still this swirling kind of uh, various different parts of, you know, of whether Russia, you know, influenced the uh, election, whether he had influence, uh, whether he was with, whether Donald Trump was influenced by Russia. So there's all this stuff still swirling about Russia. And quite frankly, they believe that he's just trying to change the conversation. Um, you know, keep in mind also that Donald Trump, it is highly unlikely that he's getting any sorts of briefings into the investigation of the the Russia hacking and all and other stuff directly from the FBI. Um, you know, the director, Director Comey, has done a pretty good job of trying to uh, keep keep it separate from the White House, and they just have this practice where they don't talk about investigations, and they're certainly not going to talk about investigations uh, surrounding the folks uh, around Trump or uh, anything related to. Uh, the election and hacking and whether or not Russia had any kind of influence or if uh, they influenced Trump in any way. So the FBI has been very careful to sort of keep that away from Trump, uh, to not inform him of where the investigation is mm -hmm. uh, and of what they're doing. Uh, so it would be highly, highly unlikely that Trump would be getting any of this information from anyone at the FBI. So then, Shimon, you talk to Justice Department intel officials all of the time, and it, when something like this has occurred involving the sitting president, are any of them expressing to you how this further deepens any of their suspicions as they continue the investigations of Russia's involvement in the U.S. elections? Um, I don't think that it deepens any of their suspicions, certainly not the law enforcement uh, people that uh, we talk to. Uh, at the various agencies uh, that have been looking at this and some of the officials on the intel side, um, there still are a lot of questions, and they, they're trying to answer those questions. But I don't think that they're any closer to figuring this out uh, right now than they were maybe, you know, in October, in November, in December. They're still working through the information. Um, I think what's more concerning to them is that Trump, you know, continues to tweet stuff like this without really – uh, backing it up or without really being informed of, of what's going on. And it just, you know, continues to kind of build this rift between the agencies and him. Certainly, you know, if anyone would be tapping phones or would have authorization uh, to wiretap a phone, it would have to be the FBI. I mean, this would be an FBI investigation. And he's essentially accusing, though he's saying it's Obama, uh, it would have to be the FBI ultimately that would do this. So and there are they are the ones that are investigating this whole uh, this whole matter. So it continues to sort of, I think, build uh, this division um, between him and some some of the some of the folks on the on the law enforcement side at the FBI and at the other other agencies uh, that are investigating this. Mm -hmm.
Uh, Shimon, uh, hold tight. I want to bring in our panel now. Uh, Professor Jonathan Turley, I'd love to bring you in on this and especially underscoring uh, Shimon Prokopes' uh, conversations with Intel. Uh, you know, it furthers this divide uh, between Intel community, FBI, and the Trump administration. How do you see this accusation from a sitting president about his predecessor with no proof undermining his credibility uh, and, and damaging uh, the president's every word, whether it be by tweet or the spoken word? Well, I think that one question I would raise about Shimon's reporting, which is, is, which is really a great contribution, is that Trump may be arguing not specifically that his phone was tapped, but that phones at the Trump Tower were tapped. And that would still raise a serious question. I think Senator Graham is correct that if there were uh, applications approved under FISA to, to um, surveil conversations in the Trump Tower, I think those are legitimate and disturbing questions to be raised. It's more disturbing when it involves FISA. And I have to say, you know, I was introduced to FISA as a young intern at the NSA, and I've been in that court, and I became a lifelong critic of it. I've litigated FISA cases since then. The standard is very, very low. Applications are rarely, if ever, turned down. Literally, only a couple of applications have been turned down the history of that law because it was written largely to evade the Fourth Amendment uh, protections. There is a protection under FISA that says that it cannot be used when someone is being investigated solely on the basis of First Amendment activities. That solely is a critical component here. It also has minimization protections that you're supposed to remove from surveillance um, collateral information, particularly First Amendment protected information. So what does all that mean? I think what it means is that President Trump has, has brought forth a very disturbing allegation. But it's also very rare for a president to talk about FISA intercepts. These are the most sensitive forms of surveillance. Presidents rarely talk about them. It's not considered an appropriate subject. Uh, and so I'm not too sure what to make from this. Mm -hmm. But if there was a FISA application approved on Trump Towers, particularly at the height of the election, mm -hmm. I think we all should have a legitimate interest in having that investigated. Mm -hmm. If there is, if this did not occur and there is no evidence to support it, and obviously it's very troubling. So it sounds like you are underscoring, uh, you know, Senator Lindsey Graham, who says this would be, you know, a, a big scandal, the biggest scandal since Watergate, if uh, there were uh, that. Um, a request for a warrant through FISA or if uh, the Obama administration were to carry through any wiretapping or FBI wiretapping without that kind of approval. So, uh, David, given that, uh, do you believe that the Trump administration or President Trump realizes the gravity of what, she's, of what he is saying? All right, it looks like we don't have that audio. Uh, Patrick, can I ask you to tackle that question? On the culture of decision making. Control room, what happened? All right, we're having we're having some real audio problems. Okay, David, I can now hear you clearly. Uh, perhaps you can hear my question in terms of whether you think uh, President Trump understands the gravity of what he is saying, especially in step with hearing Senator Lindsey Graham, <coughs> underscored by Jonathan Turley's point that this potentially could be the biggest scandal since Watergate if a request was made through FISA court or even if the FBI or Obama administration were to uh, execute any kind of wiretapping. Right. Okay. Uh, I hope you can hear me, Fred. I'm not yeah. sure what happened there. Uh, but in any case, uh, yeah, it's it's problematic and it's troubling either way, uh, just to go back to Jonathan's point. Um, if uh, if uh, President Trump is out there in a tweet storm mm. making assertions without evidence, and so far we haven't seen any evidence uh, uh, other than this tweet storm, then, uh, then I think, you know, the first question we have to ask is, what is that evidence? If the Obama administration didn't, uh, didn't in fact, tap his phones, as he's suggesting, or tap the phones at Trump Tower, and this is just being, you know, sort of bandied about in a tweet storm, that's troubling in and of itself, as Jonathan said, as Senator Graham said a few minutes ago. And if, uh, there w if the Obama administration sought and got a FISA warrant to do it, then that brings us back to all of the questions. What was the evidence? I, I know Jonathan just said it was a low bar, but what was the evidence that they were able to take to the FISA court to enable them to get the warrant, if, in fact, they got a warrant? We just mm -hmm. don't know. But can 
can I take a step back for a minute, Fred, yeah. and just say, I think one thing about this that's, that I, I see with the tweet storm is that President Trump is proceeding with this this morning as if he's still the upstart leader of a movement or as if he's still an outsider. He's the head of the government. He is the leader of the free world. He has the ability to get to the bottom of this if there is a this there to get to the bottom of. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, so, sort of... Uh, 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 strange that he continues to use Twitter to either rally people to his side on this or to bring up an issue as if he's powerless in this equation. And Patrick, in your view, is this strictly a diversionary tactic, uh, given his attorney general has been under fire, even though, uh, you know, Jeff Sessions came out yesterday, said that uh, he'll recuse himself from investigations involving uh, Russia and U.S. elections, but still the drumbeat it gets louder in terms of whether more should be taking place yeah, he's involving made sessions. These, he's made these sort of attempts to just, uh, you know, make baseless attacks that are incredibly provocative, where he doesn't uh, offer any kind of evidence, uh, you know, in, in order oftentimes to, to divert attention from you know, sort of major, really serious issues that are going on with regarding, in this case, Jeff Sessions meeting with Russians, uh, you know, others within the Trump team. But, you know, more broadly, Frederica, kind of what's going on is just the way that, that President Trump still operates here, which is he's obsessed with leaks right mm -hmm. now. He's basically hearing in the Oval Office different reports about uh, you know, how information was obtained, maybe phones being tapped. Mm -hmm. And then he's seeing basically traffic on Twitter. He, he reads Twitter regularly. And then he, he just sort of goes to social media and just makes these statements, like sort of Jonathan said, that the past presidents really would, would never make, that they would uh, basically sort of defer to discretion and to, uh, and to keeping things kind of under wraps. It's it just, it, in a way, he gets into these modes where he both wants to lash out, but he also very much wants to divert. And then, Tom, you know, what are your concerns when, you know, President Trump is talking about wiretapping of his phone, perhaps more than, you know, one phone, wiretapping at the Trump Tower in New York is what he's talking out about this. Is he also making an admission, so to speak, as the investigations are ongoing as it relates to Russia and the U.S. elections and the Trump campaign officials? Well, I think not necessarily, but, you know, the problem here is that we don't know for a fact that this FISA operation was actually conducted or that the Bureau applied for a warrant in June and was declined and reapplied in October and was granted the authority to do it. You know, we know that there's media reports, and I think that probably uh, President Trump should have used the same terminology he did throughout the campaign, and that's a people say that there was this and that that happened, or media outlets say, and, and, and not just reported that this is a fact, and therefore uh, former President Obama is a criminal and, and that this is terrible. We don't know any of the above, and it's just taking on a, uh, you know, like a snowball going down the mountain, uh, growing and growing, and we need to just take a step back. We don't know for sure if there was even a FISA on Trump Tower in the first place, mm -hmm. positively, and we may not know for a long time. And these cries for uh, public, I mean, uh, you know, special investigators, special, uh, special attorneys prosecutor. to run an investigation, mm -hmm. you know, the FBI agents would be the one conducting that investigation. So that's kind of a, you know, kind of a silly approach at this point. Just let the FBI do the investigation they're doing, FISA or no FISA. Okay, I'm going to ask all of you to hold tight. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more about uh, the controversy over Russia and the Trump campaign, a growing list of Trump campaign staff now known to have talked to Russian officials. We'll talk more about all of that in light of now these accusations coming from the sitting president about his predecessor and wiretapping. The cardinal rule of the Obama administration was that no White House official ever interfered with any independent investigation led by the Department of Justice. As part of that practice, Neither President Obama nor any White House official ever ordered surveillance on any U.S. citizen. Any suggestion otherwise is simply false. Uh, so what we have here is a categorical denial uh, that President Obama ordered any sort of wiretapping of, of then-candidate Trump. Of course, we are still waiting to hear from 
the Trump White House uh, more of an explanation. What is he basing these accusations on? He offered, of course, no proof, no evidence. Uh, we know that the president is, is golfing right now. And we also know, Fred, that this is a president who has been accusing the former president, President Obama, of a whole slew of things. He's saying that Obama is behind the protests, uh, these protests that we're seeing at town halls, Republican town halls across the country that these Congress members are, are holding, and that uh, Obama or his team are behind behind the leaks. So uh, it's clear that the president is angry. Uh, he woke up this morning and began tweeting uh, at, at around 6.30. Uh, now he's on the golf course, and we are still waiting for more of an explanation uh, from his team. Fred? All right. Athena Jones, West Palm Beach, uh, thank you so much. Keep us posted. All right, so former uh, U.S. Justice Department officials are also speaking out about this. We're getting you details from CNN's Shimon Prokopetz. Uh, he just spoke with a former senior U.S. official. Shimon, uh, what are you hearing from uh, people who are now speaking on behalf of the Obama administration? Well, it, it goes further than just the Obama administration. These are people who were directly involved in some of the investigation and were familiar with what the FBI was doing, what the Department of Justice uh, was doing and what where their investigation was going, what they were looking at. And it's basically a flat, flat denial. Uh, I'll read to you what uh, this former U.S. official told me. Uh, he said, this didn't happen. It is made up, false, wrong. Uh, and the official uh, was careful to say, you know, if we had to go down this road, uh, it would have been pretty difficult for us. Um, they would have had to go before a judge, get a warrant uh, to get permission to do this. Um, it doesn't even sound like they were thinking about doing this. There was a huge investigation ongoing, going, it's still ongoing, uh, into the, uh, Russia's meddling, uh, into the election. That's still ongoing, but at no time did anyone present to the Department of Justice, uh, hey, you know, why don't we get a wiretap of uh, Donald Trump's mm -hmm. phone? And so they are, are stressing, these are officials, uh, this is an official who's directly involved in the investigation, mm -hmm. who's familiar with the investigation, uh, and, and has stressed that uh, no time did this happen. Hmm. And so, Shimon, how would this be separate from or related to the Obama administration handing over uh, uh, classified information as it relates to a Russia uh, before President Obama, Obama departed. So this, because this was a, uh, this would have involved the FBI, and it would have been an FBI investigation. Mm -hmm. And what Trump seems to indicate by his tweet is that he was the target of the investigation. It was his sort of phones, uh, his stuff that was wiretapped. So mm -hmm. I don't know that the FBI would have, at that time, before he was president, directly briefed him. Uh, on uh, what the uh, what their investigation was, where they were going, what they were looking at. Uh, the director, uh, Comey, Director Comey of the FBI has, you know, has this sort of, he likes to keep it separate. Uh, what any investig, he doesn't like to talk about ongoing investigations, mm -hmm. uh, even with the president. I, I mean, this is what sort of happened uh, a couple of weeks ago when we reported that the White House asked the FBI to knock down some of these reports. Uh, and the point is, uh, there's these rules, and the rules are you cannot, you have to keep FBI investigations separate and outside of the White House. So, so I don't know, I, I don't believe the FBI uh, would have briefed him on this. Now, it could be that he went to the FBI today or uh, went to uh, some U.S. officials and said, hey, were there any uh, FISAs uh, out on me? Was it, it just seems that to tweet this so early in the morning, uh, I don't think that would have happened so early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the FBI w would do if he did go to them and ask them. But I think the bottom line is, from talking to all these officials, it's just, this just did not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone basically uh, just kind of is sort of wondering where he's getting this from. Mm -hmm. and, and you had mentioned that uh, many of them are simply shocked, too, that this would be said out loud by a sitting president about his predecessor without also presenting some facts or something to back up these accusations. Absolutely. I think, are they surprised? Uh, probably not. Uh, but, you know, when they use words like nonsense, I think that, that tells you a lot. That's a pretty strong, mm -hmm. ca cater uh, you know, sort of a, a strong way to categorize uh, what he's saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're not surprised. Um, I, I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty severe allegation. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes really, uh, I, it just sounds uh, to them, obviously, ludicrous. And immediately when I started calling some of, of our sources this morning, uh, the reaction was, this is just, it's nonsense. It just did not happen.
All right, Shimon Prokopetz, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Let's discuss this further with CNN national security analyst Steve Hall, who is also a retired CIA chief of Russia operations. Julian Zelitzer, a historian and professor at Princeton University. Jay Newton Small, a contributor with Time magazine. All right, good to uh, see you. Thank you. Jay, let me begin with you. You know, a, a former senior U.S. official with direct knowledge of the investigations by the Justice Department calling uh, Trump's wiretapping claims false and wrong. You heard Shimon there saying even, you know, the word nonsense being uh, used here. Uh, how do you make sense of all of this? Well, Fred, this morning I have to say I've heard a lot of um, from my hills and capital. Sorry, from my sources on Capitol Hill, Republicans who have said that they're very worried about this, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that you know, two weeks ago, Senator Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell had said it warned Donald Trump essentially to say we could do with a lot less tweeting. It really hurts our our cause in, in confirming your cabinet. It really hurts our cause in getting legislation done. Um, and they had this great week where he had, you know, this, the joint address of Congress where he stayed on message the entire time and it was a very well received speech. And then all of a sudden to wake up Saturday morning to this series of tweets, um, which is again, a huge distraction, just causes a whole other furor. Um, it's just not what they want to see on Capitol Hill. It really, they consider this a huge distraction. Mm -hmm. And it also just reignites the whole debate in America about whether or not this should be investigated. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Julian, I mean, this after, you know, Donald Trump was winning some praise after his, uh, you know, address to uh, joint members of, con you know, Congress and uh, and then seemed to be refraining from tweeting. Uh, people even saying he was behaving in a more presidential, you know, fashion, uh, you know, and, and then now you've got this. I mean, what's behind the this either instinct of not being able to help himself um, to have this kind of stream of consciousness via tweet? Well, it's either strategic, meaning that the administration and the president likes to distract the public, distract the media with this kind of tweet scandal uh, while they're trying to do other things in mm -hmm. terms of deregulation and public policy. The other, it, this is Donald Trump and the myth that there's some kind of turning point, some kind of reset is just that a myth mm -hmm. uh, and instead we wake up with the president essentially making a McCarthyite accusation against the president while claiming he's the victim of uh, McCarthyism against the former president so uh, at this point we have to assume this is just who President Trump is and there'll be more of it and every time we think there's a turning point we should take a breath because this is probably coming the next day uh, so Steve Hall, who, who is with us on, on the phone, even though we see you, Jay and Julie. And so, you know, just a reminder, this is what Trump tweeted, you know, starting 6.30 a.m. Uh, today. Just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism. Uh, how could he have, you know, just found out this at 6.30 in the morning, Steve? I mean, is it, is it your feeling that this could be the result of any kind of intelligence briefing or that perhaps he's using some other source to justify these thoughts? I doubt it's the, it's the result of, of some sort of intelligence briefing. I mean, there have been several different uh, different news agencies that have begun reporting on this. And, of course, it's, it's been out there that there has been an investigation with regard mm -hmm. to now President Trump's uh, connections to Russia for a while. But I, I'd really like to, to, to pull attention to how a FISA court works. And th this is yeah. a key check and balance. Um, but President Trump himself said um, that, that the first time they went to get the warrant for this coverage, for this technical surveillance, that it was denied. There is an awfully high bar for these federal judges who have been selected by a, various, you know, by a, a number of different past presidents to include Ronald Reagan. Uh, it, it, these things are not done simply and easily. It's, it's mm -hmm. difficult to get domestic, uh, domestic coverage. And I can tell you, as a, as a former member of this country's national security organizations, uh, there have been a number of times when, uh, when the government has been frustrated by the FISA court not being able to get the type of coverage that it wants as quickly as it wants. So there's a high bar for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And this FISA, this Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. So as a sitting president, wouldn't, Steve, he have access to be able to get to the bottom of whether indeed there was an application for a search warrant, whether indeed it was denied, whether it was requested, any of these things that he's now alleging via tweet? Well, it's, it's a difficult area because, of course, as we've seen, the White House likes to keep its distance, as it should, from ongoing investigations. And... 
you know, if the investigation involves either part of the Trump team or, or perhaps Donald Trump himself, that's going to be a, a real a real difficult issue. But, you know, these these investigations that are conducted by the Department of Justice and by FBI are specifically structured so that it, it makes it very difficult to get into the political realm. And that's part of what the FISA court uh, is expert at doing. And it's, again, it's a pa panel of federal judges who, who make these decisions. It's something that is key to our to our separation of powers, and I think something that President Trump is, is beginning to learn about how the judicial system works. Mm -hmm. And we've been hearing from Donald Trump, who has been, you know, being very critical, you know, in recent weeks of President Obama. In fact, you know, th this just might be considered the latest example of President Trump ratcheting up his attacks, you know, on his predecessor. Uh, this is what he said just Tuesday. The time for small thinking is over. The time for trivial fights is behind us. We just need the courage to share the dreams that fill our hearts, the bravery to express the hopes that stir our souls. So, so, Jay, you heard, of course, the rumblings in the room, but then, you know, now with the tweets this morning, it's not moving forward. It's once again kind of looking back, or at least in his view, kind of looking back, trying to get to the bottom of something that, again, there is no evidence of happening. Well, this is classic Donald Trump, and we saw this throughout the campaign, that he would always pick an enemy and then rail against that enemy. And and so that really united, to some degree, his base behind him because they were sort of saying, oh, we're on your side, Donald, we're going to help you fight. And that is exactly what he's still doing as president, um, whether it's the, the mainstream media, who the media is the enemy of, of the people, or whether it's uh, President Obama, who's the enemy of the people now, um, or the, in his enemy. It, it's really about an us versus them mentality which is very classic Donald Trump. The question is, is that very helpful in governance when you're trying to reach across the aisle, as he just did in his Joint Address of Congress, saying, I want to work with Democrats, I want to create legislation with them, um, and then to turn around and revile President Obama this way um, and with what seems to be baseless claims, that's not helpful when you're trying to govern. All right, Jay Newton-Small, uh, Julian Zeltzer, Steve Hall, thanks to all of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, straight ahead.